All right, so, I mean, we've hit on some of the pressures on Nike, uh, some pressure from rising competitors, uh, a lot of concerns about lack of innovation. When we talk about this earnings report and also the call, what are you looking for? Well, there's a few things. I mean, I think that the first and foremost is the changeover of the CEO. Uh, John Donahoe is, is being replaced by Elliot Hill um, in October. And Donahoe came on in 2019, really, and he kind of transformed the, the company more to a direct-to-consumer focus. Um, and they cut some ties with wholesale relationships during COVID. And um, this changeover should be a, a huge, uh, huge upswing for Nike, we're thinking, with the CEO. So I think that's going to be more in focus than the numbers. What's your take on China? Uh, China has been a, a kind of a sore spot for a lot of big U.S. brands. They've been facing rising local competition from Chinese brands. Um, at the same time, we're seeing Chinese stimulus. What do you expect to see from the quarter when it comes to China and also some of the guidance when it comes to sales overall? Obviously, China is a big growth driver for Nike and a lot of other, other big U.S. brands. Yeah, you know, the, the recent stimulus announcements in China, it's, uh, it should pick up some consumer demand and obviously... Nike, if any company, should be a beneficiary of that. But you know, it's yet to be, yet to be seen what's going to what's going to happen there on the Nike or on the China side with Nike. Um, regardless, global economy, Nike is a global company, so um, we we should see some positives. All right. Uh, in addition to earnings, there's an investor day for Nike coming up in November. Um, it's, I think it's probably when we're really going to hear from the new CEO. But when it comes to today's report, are you expecting to hear anything kind of leading into possible transformation? Are there changes that the new CEO is going to put in place? Um, or is, do you think it's just going to kind of just be a look at the business? You know, they talked about pushing that investor day back in November, all depending on where, um, where Hill is with his, his plans moving forward. But what we're kind of looking at, I think we see Nike getting back to its roots where it needs to be. They've got one of the most recognizable brands in the world, and it can't be really easily replicated. Uh, it's, you know, a change and turning around Nike is not going to happen overnight. Um, but I would expect he'll be the guy that's going to help Nike get back to uh, the formula that's made them a success it's been in the, in recent years. So let me ask um, you this. And, and Oh, sorry, man. I hate to cut you off. I just no, want go to ahead. Button, you go ahead. just want to button up with you very quickly. Uh, you are an investor. Uh, what would you need to see or hear for you to buy more shares or invest deeper into Nike? By the way, you're a big basketball guy. You run a basketball tournament. You're obviously very familiar with Nike. We see the basketball actually right over there over your shoulder. Yes. So I know you're a fan of the brand. Uh, but overall, what would it take for you to, to increase your stake in the company? Yeah, so you said it. Nike's my Nike's my. Um, I've got an affinity to, to Nike, tons of shoes, and that's that's kind of my my thing. But I'd probably wait until after earnings uh, before looking at buying more of the stock. I mean, longer term, it looks like the leader. Um, it looks like Hill's the, the guy that's going to get them to be the leader um, and kind of back to their roots. So I'm not looking for a quick rebound, but it's really hard to uh, to bail on Nike as a, as a company in general. Just they've they've got the global brand and and you know the history. So. Uh, but again, okay. you know, I, you said it, I love, love Nike.